And the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. And Jesus spoke this parable to the disciples. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for the vineyard. And after agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. And when he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing in the marketplace and he said to them, you also go into the vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. And so they went. And when he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, why are you standing idle all this day? And they said to him, because no one has hired us. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. And when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner saying, these last worked only one hour and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? And so the last will be first and the first will be last. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Exactly a week ago, I was here reflecting with you on the unfairness. If you recall, we were talking about the teaching of Jesus and being wronged or offended. And the first line of the gospel last week was, if your brother or your sister sins against you, go out and point out the fault. And I also recalled an earlier text in the gospel of St. Matthew, which states that about a person who is bringing their offering to the altar, and if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your offering there and go and be reconciled first. I raise the question of fairness because in both texts, we are told that the offended party, not the offending one, should be the first to seek reconciliation. And there's a part in us that reacts to what seems unfair, but really what we're up against is the very radical nature of the teaching of Jesus again today. We meet the question of fairness in the parable of the workers. Those who worked all day receive the same as those who worked only one hour. There's a part of us that reacts to what seems unfair. And I'm sure that many, if not most of us, have that reaction. It just doesn't seem fair. But I would suggest that as a people, we are guided by fairness, and in general, we hope that all people would be guided by the principle of fairness in dealings with others. But it doesn't seem to be reflected in God's way. But really what we are taught is not about fairness, but rather about God's justice and God's mercy. The grace and the love of God transcend the human assessments of what is fair. We cannot understand or appreciate the ways or the nature of God in terms of fairness. We recall the words of the prophet Isaiah when he spoke of God, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways. I think Father Corvin Eddy made an excellent point when he says, when we stop to think about it, the same is really true in our own relationships with our families, with our spouses, with our children, with our friends. The love between spouses, between parents and children, with our friends is never measured in terms of fairness. And so why should the love of God be measured that way? What is important is to identify the justice and mercy of God. The justice of God takes into account the greater needs of people. 
of those who are standing idle in the marketplace against their will because no one has hired them. When we look at the gospel in its entirety and the people that Jesus has reached out to, we find what Father Dennis McBride called life's latecomers, those who find themselves with some sort of challenge, the lepers, the lame, the blind, the distraught, the unemployed. They're challenged physically, psychologically, spiritually, and in today's gospel, economically. They are the prodigal sons, the woman accused of adultery, the outcast, the overlooked, the blind, the ones that people think they can ignore, the lepers, the non-believers, the tax collectors. They're found in the gospel because they are in the midst of life, both then and today. Jesus doesn't work from a calculator, which might indicate what's fair or unfair, but rather from the fullness of a compassionate, loving heart that knows no limit. Today's gospel about all of the workers receiving the, the same wage is similar to last week's gospel, where the one offended is invited to initiate the reconciliation and not the one who offends. I'd like to suggest that in both circumstances, and in fact throughout the gospel, we discover the wisdom or the logic of the kingdom of God, which we could almost call a logic of reversal. That is, a reversal of so many human values, such as our limited concept of fairness. It's based on an invitation to live like our God, with a full, compassionate heart that knows no limit. Listen again to the question the landowner put to those who went out early to work. Have I no right to do what I like with my own? The landowner's question is really about God's generosity, which transcends all categories. It means that God is treating all of life's latecomers with the same mercy as God has for those who have borne the burden of the day. God's mercy extends to those who have borne the burden of exclusion, the burden of sickness, the burden of rejection. The mercy of God extends to those on the fringe of society and often to those that we might exclude. You know, the Canadian composer Paul Anka wrote a song for Frank Sinatra called My Way. If you remember him singing it, I did it my way. We have no trouble listening to Sinatra singing it, but you know, I ask myself the question, do we allow God the freedom to do things God's way? Or are we ticked off when God doesn't agree with the way we think it should be? We need to recall the words of the prophet Isaiah, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, my thoughts than your thoughts. Please join me in prayer. We bring this day the many intentions in our hearts and we join with the people who gather around their television sets and we remember all of the intentions that they've asked that we remember in this celebration. So for them and for those intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord that we can stand before our God and appreciate the mystery and the depth of that compassionate, loving, merciful God who reaches out to each and every one of us and invites us to do the same. And for that grace for each of us, we pray to the Lord. Lord and all of this we ask through Christ our Lord.